guys, I'm the Scaly Mom here at Scaly Adventures. We are here with our very good friend Hayward Clamp. Hey Hayward. Hello. Thank you for having you? us back again. Yeah, I'm glad you're back. Yes, this is an awesome place. If you haven't been, you've got to come check it out. Pierce is in heaven here. So what we're going to do is we're in a back room where we're going to see some really cool snakes. What do we have today, Hayward? Well, uh, we for one thing, we have the three kinds of rattlesnakes that are found right here in South Carolina. Perfect. In state. We have the pygmy rattlesnake, the canebrake, the diamondback. Okay, so let's see them. So, Okay, you yeah, can we see them? Yeah, can we pull them out and then we'll here talk we about them. We get asked a lot of questions here at Scaly Adventures about venomous snakes, and we thought this was the perfect time to teach you about them in a really cool way. So what is the first one you're pulling out, Hayward? This is the Eastern Diamondback, and these are, I've, I got small ones, so they fit okay. in the playpen here. So that's the Eastern Diamondback. This one is the real feisty one. Okay, um, very feisty. Did the cameraman get hit? <laughs> that's the cane break rattlesnake. Okay. And this is actually a full-grown rattlesnake. It's the smallest of all the rattlesnakes. It's called a pygmy rattlesnake. Now that's fascinating because it looks like a baby. It does. So that's the but that's about a full-grown pygmy. Like a foot, maybe a foot and a half long. Yep, and that's their average size. Wow! And you can hear that rattle just rattling mm -hmm. away, which is, mm -hmm. is so so fascinating. The eastern diamondback there is the largest rattlesnake. We have the largest and the smallest here in South Carolina. The diamondback can reach a length of more than seven feet. Wow. Uh, the canebrake is a large snake, but they average about four, four and a half feet. Um, they're amazing. I, I know that too, when we filmed in season one, I was telling you that when, when Pierce first hicked, hooked a timber rattlesnake out in the woods, yeah. I was terrified because I thought it was going to jump six feet at him yeah. based on things I had seen on TV that had been sensationalized. Uh -huh. But actually, you were telling me that their strike distance is about two-thirds of their body or Maximum halfway? Maximum two-thirds, but they rarely go that far, and they do judge their distance. Oh, you yes. Know, Tell us about that. That's um, fascinating. They, uh, they, will, they will make a, a strike sometimes at something that's further away, but that's just to scare you. But if they really want to bite you, they have these heat-sensing pits on the side of their head, and that's how they take their food. They're able, by feeling the heat, judge the exact distance uh, to the prey animal. Right. So that way they don't smash into it. They don't smash their own head. Uh, right. Uh, they have to be careful not to get injured, too. I think that this is really fascinating because you can learn so much from animals. I know we have. I mean, you think of that animal coming at something so fast, but it's actually very delicate. It's super yeah. fast, and then he pauses yeah. long enough to know not to hurt himself, not yeah. to smash his own head, mm -hmm. and then just to strike and then pull back. Yeah, their radar is amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And they know, too, that's why sometimes babies, don't they inject all of their venom, and then they're more vulnerable, but an adult will, will attack just enough, right? They'll just inject just yeah. enough? They, they are able to control the venom dose. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this. Again, check out scalyadventures.com for more awesome and educational videos like these. We'll see you there.